It's Monday, March 11th, 2024. As you can tell by the fact that my eyes are almost not open, uh, it's a very bright sunny day here. Full sunshine and uh, full snow coverage, so it's very, very bright. There's water and ice here, so the sun is coming off of that too. And as you can see, unloading that cabinet, loading the truck, that is exactly how it's supposed to work. And it doesn't always work that nice, but that's the way it's supposed to work. We need to get this little orange guy to do the heavy lifting. And that's 600 pounds of honey and a bunch of jars. I didn't put very many jars in here. Normally I'd have probably two skids of jars, but I'm having a, a lot of pails filled this time at the packer. Pail cells have really been really good. You know, everybody's coming in the yard here, buying pails, getting pails for delivery, all that kind of stuff. It just, uh, I sell a lot of pails. So that's really, really nice to move the honey and, and get, that, uh, get that income in the bank. So today, I'm gonna to be playing wood shop again today. There's a couple things that uh, I neglected to do when I was all excited about being finished uh, milling lumber for this season. Uh, nothing really huge, but it is gonna take me a while to uh, actually finish that up. So I'll show you what that is. So you can see here, I brought in all of the lid material for the six frame covers and the 10 frame covers. The problem is I realized I hadn't drilled the holes in them yet. And it's a, a whole lot easier to drill those holes before assembly than after. So I've just started it here and I'll show you what I'm doing. I managed to get the table that that little drill press was on out of the corner and I put my big drill press in the corner. Uh, now this jig that I made, it was just kind of a quick and dirty jig, but it works great. So what I've got here is I've just got a platform that's laid out and that will, uh, that will locate a 10 frame cover in the center here. I still have to locate it center that way. Uh, but then again, when I'm doing six frame covers, I've made myself a six drill press, six frame cover spacer. So I don't get rid of that. And then I can do three. Uh, I've stacked up four, but I usually don't drill through the fourth one. I'll drill, you know, that much into the fourth one. And then we can go again. So there's all my smoker fuel. <laughs> and then that one, I actually drilled quite a ways through that one. Boy, I get a lot of slivers out of this material. It's just awful that way. A lot of these, are not cut to width and some of them are closer than others. You can see this one has got a really rough edge. So I wanna make sure I put the rough edge on this side so that the hole is located in relation to the quote good edge. And then when I'm done assembly, then I cut that other edge off. It does take a while to do all of these. 
but because my old drill press didn't have enough throat here to do the, I could do the six frame covers, but not the tens. Um, I used to do those by hand with a half inch drill and that was a totally different deal. That, that just totally played me out. It's Wednesday, March 13th, 2024. If you can hear fatigue in my voice, that's only because I'm very tired. Yesterday was a long day, and it often is when I do a trip to Winnipeg, do my packer run, do some deliveries, some errands, and then in the evening have our bee club meeting. That uh, wears me out. It's a long, long day. I get home about midnight, and uh, then, you know, I try to get up and get back to work. So today, uh, I am going to get back to work, and I'm going to be building six frame covers. So I've got my six frame cover blanks uh, drilled as far as the feed holes go, and so now it's a matter of assembling the cleats and the shims, and then they'll be ready for roundovers and trimming, and then ultimately dipping and delivery to the customer. And there's two customers, and one is me. <laughs> so. That's what's going to go on today. Um, I don't know if I should share this with you, but I, I fell down on the ice again yesterday. And uh, that's one of my problems is I'm hurting a bit. Uh, mostly my, I, I kind of went down on my arms, so mostly my, my shoulders. And you can see I scraped my arm there, my hand, and my, my fingers here. This is new. So this one's new, it happened about five minutes ago, I bashed my thumb on something. That thumb is, is bad from the fall, it's turning purple, and it hurt a lot yesterday. It's not as bad today, but I bashed it on something else, so, you know, it's funny when I go to the hospital for blood test, and, uh, you know, the person taking the blood, they have a hard time finding a vein. I, I just tell them, you should come to my place, follow me around for a day, and you'll get plenty of blood, don't you worry. So. Suffice it to say, I may be a little bit clumsy, uh, but you know, I do try to do try to stay safe, which we all should. So what I've got here is I've got my blanks over here, and what you can't see is I've got my cleats and my shims here in front of me, and my work area. I've been getting my my air nailer stapler ready with the associated ammunition and uh, glue and I think that's about it. I've got paper towels here to clean up any extra glue and I think I'm ready to go. I've got my, my screws, my screw gun uh, to assemble these. So I'll, I'll tip this camera down so that you can see the work instead of my ugly face and we'll get to it. Okay, I've got my sacrificial uh, work top here, just a piece of plywood that I use. I like to have it uh, flat. I like a surface that's flat and not a lot of glue knobs sticking on it. There get to be drops of glue and they stick up. So I've taken my chisel and scraped it fairly flat from the little chunks I took off. And that is because the very first thing I do is I'll assess what's the nice side. And I think that is, you know, it's much nicer than that side. I painted these orange, that's Kubota orange, <laughs> on one side, and I want to start with the good side down. The first part is an end cleat, and so now you can see where this rabbit comes in. That should lock in right to that piece of plywood right there. So how I'm going to do this, so you can see this end is all messy. Now I'll show you with this measuring tape. I've cut these over size and this one's this one's going to have a little bit of nastiness on the end because it's going to be 11 inches so there's going to be a little bit of that but that won't hurt anything this this will end up being one of my covers because it'll be less than less than perfect so I'll get my glue bot here I want to put a little bit of glue on the shoulder a little bit of glue on the face. This one there. And this is where I want my work surface to be. 
black because I want to press that cleat to the table and the, the uh, plywood to the table while I nail it. Get my nail nice and horizontal. Just a few nails. That's a 2 inch 16 gauge nail. I don't want that glue running down that cleat when I tip it over is why I clean that off. And then flip that over. I work better right-handed. So I like to keep my work side. And you want, you know, some squeeze out is good. More on it. Medicate it though. Too much squeeze out's a waste of glue. Okay. Now I'll put that over. See my my nails came out here a little bit, which happens. Not a big deal. Got my nice little tack hammer. to get the nails uh, aligned so that they don't come out there but that's not the end of the world because that's going to be covered with my top cleat and the top cleat goes on next okay so I can get some glue on these um, I remember how I was doing this Using my, I think I was using my brush. Use your finger, you get glue on everything. Every year I do this, it ends up being a little different because <laughs> it's been, you know, 10 months since I've done it. I have to kind of relearn again. Okay. So this top cleat will go here. This top cleat will go here and then again with the two inch nail and that's see that rub joint you could you could leave that you could rub that and leave it and it would dry and it would be a good joint the reason I use nails really is to locate it keep it where exactly where I want it nothing holding this side of the cleat down. I could get my clamp and I could squeeze that. You can see that glue. When I squeeze it, you can see that glue come out. But I don't have that many clamps. I could only build about three or four covers a day and I clamp them. So this is where the screws come in. And I think I was putting four screws in these. Right down. so it doesn't drip. I don't want glue everywhere. If, if the glue gets on the surface and it dries, then the wax doesn't permeate that. Okay, now I get, I can apply glue all the way around here. So 
side shims, side shim, long shims, I actually call these. And again, these names, I just made these names up so that I could have some kind of naming convention for my for my parts list. And yeah. Sometimes I run right into that screw. There's one small thing I'm doing different this year. You may, you may not, may or may not be able to see the, the, these uh, shims here. Well, these shims as well, but specifically these shims here are wider than three quarter inch. Uh, this is, see, this is three quarter inch, so you can see that it's an eighth wider, it's seven eighths material. So that's commonly what Canadian box is made of, 7 inch material. But the reason I wanted to use those here is so that when I'm done, uh, when I'm second last thing I do is I'll run this through the table saw again. Uh, this is supposed to be an 11 inch color cover. I'll cut this, uh, referencing this nice side on the fence, and I'll trim this to 11 and, and uh, an eighth. And then I'll turn it around and I'll just skin this side off just to uh, get everything nice and perfectly lined up. It makes such a beautiful finish when you do that at the end. And the very last thing I do is I'll, I'll run my little router, my roundover bit on all the edges. And that just makes it so much, uh, it, it really does um, make it nicer to look at. But it uh, it also makes it nicer to handle, and when you when you grab that cover, you know these these edges are are sharp. You know they're they're uh, freshly cut edges. When you grab that in your hand and it's rounded over, you can definitely feel that, and it looks nice too. It's surprising though how much nicer it looks. So anyway, those are the finishing touches. And that's one, and it's 53 to go. It's Friday, March 15th, 2024. And if you uh, hear optimism in my voice, that's only because there is a ton of optimism in my voice. Because, as you can see here, I have completed my assembly of the six frame covers that I need to do this year. There's not that many. I actually made extras. Uh, just because I had a few extra parts, I thought, you know what, I'll assemble these instead of just putting parts away for next year. Uh, I think I had 54 on the docket, and I believe I made 60. So the next stage is to take these and run them through the table saw. You can maybe see that these are a bit long. I painted them orange just so I don't lose track of which side is the, the trim side. <clears throat> and so I'll trim those up, and I'll, I'll show you how I do that. And then I do the roundovers on all the edges to make them nice and smooth and nice and um, easy on the hands, you know, when you pick up the equipment. I certainly notice a difference in my theory when those edges are rounded. Uh, so I'll do that, and then I'll just stack them up on the pallet, wrap them up, and then they'll have to sit for a while. Uh, so the next stage is then four times this many 10 frame covers. So this is about, uh, well, I was to make 54, I made 60. And the next stage is to make 200 of the 10 frame covers. 
So that's going to be a big job. It's going to take me a while because, you know, this took me a while. This took me a few days to do this. So I don't know how many I'm doing a day. It really depends on what else is going on that day. I think I had, I think I did about 20 today. I did more than 20 yesterday. Uh, so that was good. I just had some stuff this morning to take care of. And yesterday morning at meeting. And so I didn't get anything done until, you know, noon-ish both those days. So that's been this week, and that'll be most of next week too. I'll, I have a day in Winnipeg again next week, but uh, it's just going to be building covers is really all that's going to be going on. And I have to really concentrate on that because it's likely going to take me till the end of March to finish building covers, and then I have to build 100 and 118 pallets. Uh, so that'll take a while too. And that's going to push me well into... Uh, beekeeping season. Now in April there isn't a lot to do generally, it's just keeping them fed and, and watching over them. Um, I think the bees are maybe going to come out in about two weeks. Uh, the weather, for as warm as this winter has been, the weather has definitely turned cold in, in March. So it uh, is going to be the last week in March or first couple days of April that I move them out. So I'll look forward to that and look forward to recovering some storage in my building for my wooden ware, which is great. That's partly why I started with the covers first because they're more compact. Uh, I can store those on a couple of pallets and wrap them up and put them in the shed or something or even leave them in the wood shop for a short period of time. They get in the way though. But the pallets, when I start to do pallets, it fills up half of my honey house. So I, I wanted to do the covers first. I didn't want to get a bunch of pallets made before the bees were out. Uh, so anyway, that's the logic there. Thanks for sticking around for this. Thanks for watching, and I'll uh, update you again next week. Take care and have fun.